All right. Should be recording now. Yes, it is. All right, picking back up on Brutal Fairy Tales, where last we left off at. Keep in mind, this is a personal script. I hope you enjoy it. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. As we continue on our merry way... <clears throat> when I... Blah. When Astroff finally stopped, Alistair found himself in the heart of the woods. There in front of him was a huge, ancient, white oak tree growing out of the ground. It was the size of a four-story building, and as thick as one, too. There were several notches on the hard trunk of the tree, like broken branches. The tree's branches above them reached out far and wide from the trunk. <coughs> it was like it was holding up the very sky above them. From where he stood, Alistair looked up at the tree. It was one. Uh, it was. Alistair looked up at the tree. It was the biggest one he had ever seen. Inside the city, he had no idea that it was even here. It was like an ancient, forgotten relic from the past. He wondered just how long this tree had been standing here, as the rest of the city was built around the wooded park. <coughs> ah, sorry. It was then he noticed that this place was completely silent. All, oh, he could not hear the sounds of the city just outside the park. The roaring engines of cars, the steps of the people, nor the buzzing of electricity. This place felt devoid of life and sound. The only sound, only the sound of silence surrounded him now and the hot winds beating against him. Astroff threw the bag onto the ground, uh, threw the bag off his shoulder onto the ground with a heavy thud. Alistair noticed there were several bags around the area. The bags were blown about by the wind, some half rotten from time spent out in the elements, time spent in the elements. As Astroff pulled out a multi-tool, off his belt. As Astra pulled a multi-tool off his belt, he flicked the knife of the multi-tool out before he cut the large burlap bag wide open and left it on the ground. Alistair watched in confusion at Astroff, wondering what he was doing. Astroff put the blade back into the multi-tool, then he put it back into its carrier on his belt. He wiped his hands clean, then put two fingers in his mouth and let out two loud whistles. As the, whistle, as the whistling rung through the woods, wild dogs came running through the trees like their ancient wolf ancestors before them. The dogs came running towards Astroff and the food. Some of them started eating immediately, as others circled around Astroff, wanting him to pet them. Oh my god, who had puppies? Astroff asked as he petted the dogs. He counted all the new mutt puppies in the pack. Alistair could tell that Astroff loved these dogs like they were his own. The pack seemed to acknowledge him as their primary alpha when he was around. Astroff and the pack stopped as they looked towards the tree line. There, Alistair saw a large golden yellow guard dog. Alistair could see the deep and heavy scars on the dog's body. Astroff stepped in front of the pack and glared at the dog. 
Alistair immediately could see there was some history between this dog and Astroff. You want to go again? Astroff asked, walking towards the dog. Come here now, he ordered, snapping his fingers and pointing at the ground. The dog hung its head before it walked towards him. He just stared at the dog as it walked up to him and lay down in front of him. Astroff knelt down and petted the dog before he led it back to the pack. Astro Alistair, Alistair wondered if that the uh, Alistair wondered if that was the pack's original alpha before Astroff showed up. Astroff led the dog over to the food over to the ba food bag. Then the dog looked at Ash looked up at Astroff, who snapped his fingers and pointed at the bag. With that, the dog started eating hungrily. Alistair watched as Astroff and the dogs. Alistair watched Astroff and the dogs, now knowing that Astroff was the alpha leader of this pack. Alistair walked up to the dogs as he knelt down one of the yeah, one of the dogs came up to him. The dog just wanted to be petted and licked Alistair's face as it wagged its tail for him. Then more of the dogs came up to Alistair. <coughs> Astroff quietly walked up behind Alistair as his attention was held by the dogs. <sighs> his eyes were locked onto Alistair's head as he slowly and carefully walked towards him. Are they yours? Alistair asked as he petted some of the dogs. No. They're just strays abandoned by their owners. I just feed them. Astroff answered coldly as he reached into his trench coat. He knew what he would have to do to be rid of Alistair once and for all. Oh, poor things. I guess we have something in common, then, Alistair said, completely oblivious to the encroaching danger behind him. What do you mean? Astroff asked as he pulled his gun out and pointed it inches away from the back of Alistair's head. Astroff's eyes were completely empty and cold, like there was no life in them. His face was completely blank and expressionless like a statue. He was completely devoid of all emotions and life right now. He was not dissimilar from that of a machine. He had weighed his options in his mind and come to the and come to the one conclusion one concisive conclusion. He knew what he had to do, and sadly, he knew it all too well. This would not be the first time that Astroff has had to kill so that he and his brother could keep on living. Nor would this be the last time that he would kill. It was better to deal with this here and now, at least here in this place. No one would hear the gunshot and disposing of the body would be quite easily. This was just one more ugly thing that he could live with at the end of the day. Alistair was way too dangerous for both Astroff and Rook's very, life, very lives. He continuously drew too much attention towards them. With him around, the monster would find them much quicker and easier. This was sadly something Astroff would not allow to happen. As for the monster, it would kill Alistair anyway. It Once it saw him, it would stop at nothing to end his life. So ending his life... here... and now might be considered a mercy for what that monster will do to him. <clears throat> Astroff 
would keep himself and his brother safe no matter what, nor who he had to kill to do so. His finger slowly reached out for the trigger and hooked around it. My parents are dead. Dad died in the war and Mom killed herself not long after. I guess it, I wasn't enough to keep her going. The state claimed me and sent me to live in the orphanage. Well, it happens, right? Alistair explained as he shrugged his shoulders. Astroff stopped as he heard that. This was still fine by him. He would send Alistair to his dead parents so they could be together again. I'm sorry to hear that, Astroff said as his hand started to shake. His, fingers tight his finger tightened around the trigger. He slowed his breathing. He knew that he had to do this now. However, he just couldn't bring himself to do it. Why, he thought to himself. He knew he could do this. He knew that he could live with himself afterwards. So why was... So why would his finger not squeeze the trigger? He couldn't understand why. Oh, he couldn't understand why this feel why this felt so wrong. Still, he knew that he had to do it all the same. It's fine. I'm not the only one there, so it's fine. Alistair said, reassuring himself more than anyone. Bloody tears started rolling down Astroff's face. But He could not understand why. This didn't make any sense to him. He had done this so many times before now. He tried to close his heart to it. He tried to take his mind off it. But he just couldn't stop this feeling. He could barely hold up his hand anymore. This was wrong. Alistair had done nothing wrong to them. However, if he stuck around, he would put all three of them in danger. No, this has to be done... Now. Astroff thought to himself. If Alistair stuck around, then the monster would savagely kill him anyways. The monster didn't like others being around Astroff. It would only make exceptions for Rook and no others. He had to do this... And he had to do it now. Astroff's arm felt so weak now, the gun was unnaturally heavy in his hand. He may have only been holding the gun up for a few moments, but it felt like an eternity had passed. He turned his head to Rook, who was growling softly at him, telling him not to go through with this action. Astroff quietly looked back at Alistair. Uh, as his arm fell to his side with a deep, heavy sigh. As if he was breathing for the first time since this started. He just couldn't do it, no matter what he told himself. He just couldn't do it. This was bad. This was only going to bring him trouble down the line, and he knew it. Still, he just couldn't bring himself to go through with this. Was it a sense of whimsy or a sense of empathy? That was simply impossible. Whoops. Having some technical difficulties. After all, Astroff himself 
was a psychopath. Uh, whoops. Give me one second. So feelings like that were simply impossible for him to comprehend and understand. He had long since thought that he had abandoned such emotions. He had such emotions of weakness. For now... Oh. For he had done the... So much he had done so much worse to other souls before now. In those moments, he never once hesitated beforehand. So, just why was it here and now? He couldn't bring himself to do it. Oh, uh, so just why it was. So, just why. Was it here and now? He could not bring himself to do it. However, oh, sorry. Whatever it was, it would not change the fact Astroff couldn't bring himself to end Alistair's life. He would hate himself later, for now he needed to go. Somewhere, right now, someone was mocking him, and he just knew it. Astroff put the gun or put the gun back into its holster and turned away from Alistair, clearing his face with his sleeve. Alistair looked back at Astroff and saw him lighting another cigarette. He stood up and wiped the dirt off his overalls and shirts from the dog's paw prints. Sorry to bring down the mood, Ash, Alistair said with an upbeat tone. What did you just call me? Astroff asked, looking back at him. Ash. Astroff is a mouthful, so I'll just call you Ash. Okay? Alistair explained, shrugging his shoulders. Whatever. Do as you please. The day is about over. I need. I just needed to check up on the dogs. I'm leaving now. Astroff said as he quickly walked away. As he headed back through the woods, Rook playfully bumped into Astroff's side. He looked over at his four-legged brother and patted his back. Careful, Rook, or I'll give you a bath tonight, Astroff stated, looking at Rook. Hey, wait for me. I don't know the way out of here. Alistair said, or Alistair shouted as he noticed Astroff and Rook were leaving him behind. They led Alistair through the woods and led him... All the way back to the park trails, as Astroff and Rook turned to finally get away from Alistair. Hey, can we meet? Hey, can we hang out tomorrow? Alistair cried out. No, may we never see each other. Uh, may we never see each other ever again? Al Astroff explained. Okay, I'll see you two tomorrow then. Alistair shouted at them. Go fuck yourselves. Uh, go fuck yourself. Astroff shouted back, holding up his middle finger to Alistair. As Astroff... Oh, sorry. As Alistair headed away from Astroff and Rook, he left Astroff completely dumbfounded. Still, Astroff just chopped this up to a random chance meeting. After all... What were the chances of meeting him again in the city? There was no way that he would ever see Alistair again. After all, this was one of the biggest cities in the world. Most importantly, Astroff knew that Alistair was going to be more trouble than he's worth. <coughs> Astroff hoped that he would never see Alistair again for the rest of the summer. He didn't want nor need Alistair around them. He had his brother Rook and his gun. That was all he needed in this world. He didn't he did not like being around people. They annoyed him to no end. He hated all the noise of the city and her people. 
and wished they would go away. He wanted everything. Uh, he wanted them to disappear so he would finally. He wanted them to disappear so he would never have to deal with them ag ever again. Even Alistair annoyed him and hated being around him for any amount of time. Astroff never wanted to see Alistair again and finally be alone. He wanted to go back to just being him and his brother alone and having and not having to deal with people anymore. Astroff stopped for a moment as he realized that he was going back to where he was two years ago, wishing that the world would simply go away around him. Unfortunately, back then, he got what he wanted, and to this day, he... He and to this day, it still scarred him both mentally and physically. For a brief moment, he wondered why he was back to that state of mind. Maybe he was simply going mad. Maybe it was that brief moment of hesitancy that was driving him closer to the deep end. Still, it would not change the fact. It seemed like he was going backwards, not forwards anymore. He had to put those thoughts behind him and keep pressing on. Onward. There was simply no time left for doubt. There was no time for hesitancy. He just had to get through this and finally move on. To let go... Oh, sorry. To let his past and let his hatred finally die. He would have to bury those memories deep within his mind, ignore the faces that flashed in front of him, ignore the screams and the sounds they made as they died, the smell of burning flesh and fur. Then he could finally move on with his life. Maybe he was just thinking too much about it. He would have to put his mind off it now. After all, it was getting late now. They needed to get home, or they would be in trouble. Alright, that's a pretty good place to stop for right now. I'd like to thank you all for coming. <coughs> Please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you have any good feedback, feel free to give it to me. I'll take it in, under consideration and advisement. Until then, thank you so much for your time and have a beautiful day.